Okay, so in class we got through an example of constructing a confidence interval. And one of the things we ended with was the interpretation. So we're going to talk a little bit more specifically about what that interpretation does mean and what it actually does not mean, just for clarification. So when we interpreted that confidence interval together in class, we said that we're 90% confident that between 25.94% and 32.06% of Boone County Elementary School students are eligible for free or reduced lunch. That was pretty much exactly what we said. Now it's incorrect for people to say the probability that between 25.94% and 32.06% of Boone County Elementary School students are eligible for free or reduced lunch is 90%. So what we want to talk about is that difference, that distinction between how that 90% is being used. And to understand this, we're going to reference back to our previous video. So you're going to have to go back to about page 2 of your notes if you have the notes printed out. And so we ended with this in the last video that we watched, in this little green statement that I had. So we determined that that 1 minus alpha was the probability that the interval contains P. So notice I do actually use that word probability there. So why can't I use that word probability? It's actually in that process that's being used, it's being used incorrectly here. So again, we just said that one minus alpha was the probability that the interval contains P. So we did a 90% confidence interval. So what we're going to do is if we had 100 different people take a sample of 600 students, and construct 90% confidence intervals for each, 90 of those intervals would be expected to contain the population proportion. So that's sort of what the distinction means. But let's suppose that we each went out and got a sample. Right? If we each constructed our confidence interval, we're going to get slightly different numbers because our p-hats are going to be slightly different numbers. But if I could pretend for a moment that I actually knew what p was, and the only reason I have to do this is for this understanding to make sense. So suppose that, in reality, 30% of all Boone County Elementary School students are eligible for free or reduced lunch. So if I look at my interval that I just constructed, that we did in class, I could draw that on here. You don't have to put a scale along the bottom, but right, so about 26% to about 32%. Is 30% inside my interval? Yes, so mine does contain P. What that means, going back to our picture from the first video, is that our p-hat did fall somewhere between A and B, and so when we constructed that interval, P was inside of it. But just as we said here, sometimes P is not going to be in our interval. But how often should that happen? So if I constructed 10 intervals, different p-hat is going to give me a different range of values. And let's suppose I construct 10 of my intervals here. And these are my 10 confidence intervals that I've constructed. And what I can look at is where 0.3 falls. Now what you'll notice is that not all of the intervals had that point 0.3 inside of it. In fact, we had one didn't. So how many of them did? Well, nine of them did. So nine out of ten, that's what that 90% is. So 90% of the time, my interval will contain 30% notice somewhere inside of it, right? Sometimes it's more on the right-hand side, sometimes it's more in the middle, sometimes maybe it's more on the left-hand side, right? So, but it's just somewhere inside of it. There. There's not one number I like in my interval any more than another, so all of the numbers inside here are just as likely to be P in my mind when I construct this interval than any other. But 30% is going to be somewhere inside of 90% of those intervals. That's what that means. Once I've actually constructed my interval, it's either inside my interval or it's not inside my interval. So that's what that confidence is really meaning for us. That is the percent of time that our interval basically is going to be one of these good intervals. One of the ones that actually does contain P inside of it somewhere. 
So now hopefully you can see why would you sometimes want a higher confidence level. So if I had 95% confidence instead of 90% confidence, that just means that 95% of my intervals will contain P, whereas 5% will not. Now maybe it's making you ask the question, why don't we always use a really high percentage for my confidence then? Why don't I always use like the 99.7% for my confidence level? Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that downfall in class together next time. But there is a downfall to using a higher confidence. So we do have to worry about balancing confidence with our downfall that we will talk about next time. And so in class together, we're going to be working with some Hershey's Kisses. And so we will get to do a little activity in class together. So we're going to be working some Hershey's Kisses and constructing a confidence interval for this.